Hello everyone, Badjo here and today we're going to take another look at the AGS-37 Vigan and this time we're going to take a look at the different countermeasures that the Vigan has available. They mainly come in three types, we have uh, chaff, flares and then we have ECM or jamming. Now chaff and flares are kept in the KBFC flare chef dispenser. You can get two of these on six and two and I can only go on these pylons so you could get two of them like that and they will then release in parallel so you can get double the amount of shaft and flares out if you need to which isn't a bad thing what you also could do is you could put a jammer on here now what the jammer does is they try to jam the enemy radar signal and we'll go into that a little bit later in the video but so these are the things you need to have U22 a and not U22 because that one is a bit older. So in order to use these we'll begin with the jammer and it's these two switches are the jammer switches. Here we have the countermeasure switches or I think it's a ref floor which is like chaff or F is both and an F for flares, fucklor. Here we have the countermeasure operation mode switch. You put these two in different configurations and you get different programs. You have the KB selector and the streaks mode selector. So here we have the jammer. Well, currently it's off, it's in zero mode. You put it in A, AF, it puts it in preheat mode. And this KBHKASL light will come on. Three minutes later that light will go out and the pot will be preheated, it's ready to use. In order to use it, you put it to B. It's now in automatic mode. It has a 60 degree cone in front of you. And then you can go 45 degrees up and down, it stabilizes the horizon. Uh, you can use either this, you don't have to touch this to have active transmission, but I used to, I like to keep it in BK. An AK is listening mode. You can have it in any of these modes. It's not AF because that's preheat. I think these work. I mean, if we want to have EK, that works. B, D, E, and then G, H, J, and K. They all do the same. So that's that. Then for countermeasures, you have two ways of deploying them. You have the countermeasures, the quick countermeasure release. It will release one chef and one flare. I forget what exactly the interval is, but it's basically the only way to release flares in the VIG, and it will then release them over time in a pretty slow way. And it's good to just press that if you get, oh shit, there's something is shooting at me and I don't know what it is, then just kick out both shaft and flares. Now it's important that you adjust the amount here, because sometimes this happens. You get 280 flares and zero shaft, or something like that. And then you may wonder, why the hell am I not getting any uh, chaff? So you have to set this manually. I usually keep it pretty even, like something like that. Depending on the mission. I mean, sure, go all the way if you like. Depending on what sort of threats you're facing. Uh, then the other mode that I use is one countermeasure mode one, streak zero. What it will do is it will release a rapid release program. I will show you what these look like in just a moment. But it will basically throw out pretty quickly, like I think it's once a second. So it's it's like that, it throws shaft out. Which is pretty useful if you see a lot of missiles coming at you. Because <clears throat> countermeasures are used like shaft is against radar guided missiles and flares against heat seeker. It's the basic lesson there. And it's still a dice roll whether or not these are gonna hit you or not. Uh, the missile can still hit you even if you throw out a lot of shaft. It's still random if it's gonna go after the shaft or you. As I'll demonstrate. But if you throw out a lot of shaft you increase the odds. So that's for the cockpit. Now there are many different modes and combinations but this is the one I would recommend, mode 1. Mode 2 is basically medium release, it's slower, it's about, it's more than twice as slow I think. 
And then you have mode 3, which is like extremely slow. It's like five times slower. It just throws them out over an eight minute period. I think in mode 2... Or I forget. And then there's also automatic mode A. When the radar warning receiver picks up a radar signal, it will then... Uh, what's it called? Throw out chaff. So our jamming pod is ready. And you can see that it's ready. Because the motverk light. That's the reason I like to kind of keep it in K mode, BK. Because then that light comes on. And uh, when that's flashing, then the jammer is doing its thing. So let's take a look at how these things look in the air. So we're in the air now and we're going to take a look at the countermeasure selector. But first we're going to take a look at what the quick release program looks like. By pressing a quick release, release chaff and flares at the same time at a pace of, I don't know, one every two seconds maybe. And yeah, that's a pretty good way to just release both chaff and flare in an emergency. But if you know you're being targeted by radar guided missiles, I think release mode 1 is better and it's like this. You press the countermeasures continuous button, then you press countermeasure off to turn it off. If you press the countermeasure interval button, you can release as fast as you want by pressing the button as many times as you need to. Or you can hold it down and it's the same as before. Now countermeasure mode 2 is basically slower. basically the exact same program as the quick release and then we have countermeasure program 3 which is very slow so yeah use program uh, 1 and streak selector set to 0 and not 4 and Let's go and test the jammer against some targets to see what that does. Every time you drop a countermeasures bundle, you get a countermeasure like saying Mutwerk. And when you're about to run out of flares, you get the flares out light coming on. Facklor slut light. When it's blinking, you're about to run out of flares and you're out when it's solid. It's the same for shaft. You get the KBV, and then you get the KBH light coming on. H for höger, which means right, and V for vänster, which means left. Same thing as before, blinking or about to run out, and when it's solid, you are out. Just a quick little thing. Let's move on. So, we're now flying towards some SA-15s, which are ahead of us. Uh, we're gonna disable the countermeasures pod for now. We're not going to use it this time. And I'll turn off the countermeasures as well. The flare. So it was set to automatic mode by default. Uh, and then we're just going to watch. Here we can see our distance to the target. And in my experience they usually almost always fire at around give or take 15 kilometers. Plus minus one basically. They are all on that island, so we should be in range very soon. We're going to maintain the same speed so we don't ruin anything, because the range they fire at would obviously depend on how fast we're traveling. If we're traveling faster, we're going to get closer before they get a chance to fire. Unless they can fire on us earlier. Turn off the sound warning. And we're gonna wait for some launches. There. And we are 16 kilometers away. Now we're gonna take a look at what happens with the jammer. We'll turn on the jammer from B to BK. BBK. And I'll turn off the countermeasures. And then we're just gonna wait. 
turn off the beeping. You can see I'm still in search radar mode. Jammer is doing its thing. We're now 15 kilometers. Still no launch. 13 kilometers. Turn off the autopilot. 11 kilometers. And there they launch, about 10 kilometers. Do an invasive split S. And so, yeah, as you saw. We were able to take away about, what would that be, 33% of their range from 15 down to 10 kilometers. So it's quite useful if you want to get closer, but it also means that you have less flight time. So it has its pros and cons. Now let's take a look at the countermeasures and the effect they have on these missiles. So we begin by turning off the armor and we turn it to mode 1. And we're set. So, the best way to evade these missiles since they're radar guided is to notch the radar. And what notching means is that you're traveling from side to side like this. So the SAM should be on my side. The radar is struggling to detect you when you're coming... Well, it's easier to detect you when you're coming right for it. So we're gonna wait for this. All of go. off. Go. And then release shaft and start maneuvering. Put them on our 90 degree to the right, basically. And you can see some of them have already started tracking all over the place. So if we look at the F10 map, we can see that one I think is still tracking me. And possibly this one too. Oh, it's given up. Yep, that one too. It's been fooled. And because these are now struggling to track me, they cannot actually launch. Since we are notching, it's hard for the radar to detect us when we are like this. So we're gonna turn on the target again. A little bit, we have stopped deploying shaft. This might be enough for them to get a targeting solution on us again. same thing here missiles are going all over the place now that one's tracking me for sure and it's given up so you see how powerful chaff is against uh, radar guided missiles like that it actually surprised me the first time I used this and it's like wow missiles are just dispersing so now we need to try the automatic mode I want to see what that does since I have never actually used it this will be interesting so, set it to automatic mode, no streak release, turn the radar or sound off. Now, we don't have a jammer for this, but we'll leave it in the same settings anyways. And then we press the countermeasure button. Now releasing, notching, this is not looking good, so I'm actually going to abort this. Ah, oh, that was harsh. <laughs> a lot of G's. So yeah, the automatic mode is garbage. Maybe I did something wrong, but I tested this a few times and it kind of did the same thing. Except the first time it kind of ran the standard program, so I don't know. It feels a bit strange. I would rather have manual control anyways. Anytime. So I guess that concludes our tutorial on the countermeasures of the Viggen. I hope it has been useful and that I could explain things in an easy and visual way. 
and I'll see you around. Badjo out.